This week on VQBug News, May Craig interviews web producer Steve Pasola about the new changes to the MCLA website. Sim Kerr previews upcoming Darnell Moore's virtual lecture hosted by MCLA's Lavender Fund. An effort to bring Darnell was very purposeful. Um, we felt that he was a really good first speaker to bring as part of the series because um, he is in intersectional. And That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. And welcome to the September 23rd episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Cara Fusco. MCLA announced in a press release that the spring's Michael S. and Kitty Dukakis public policy lecture will be presented by former Arizona Congressman Jeff Flake. This event, entitled Election 2020 in the State of U.S. Politics, will be on Thursday, October 1st at 5 p.m. The event is free and open to the public. Advanced registration is required. For more information, call 413-662-5224 or go to mcla.edu slash public policy. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and if you want to learn more about the campaign to increase awareness about the disease, then make sure to virtually join the Women's Center on October 1st from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. The Berkshire County Walk to End Alzheimer's will be on Saturday, October 3rd from 8.30 a.m. till noon at the Adams Visitor Center. This event is held annually in more than 600 communities across the nation. To learn more, go to facebook.com slash Alzheimer's M-A-N-H. On September 23rd, the MCLA's Lavender Fund is hosting a Darnell's, the Darnell's Moore virtual lecture on LGBTQIA plus issues in Moore's book, No Asters in the Fire. Sim Kerr gave us the inside scoop on what happened at this event. Darnell Moore will be visiting MCLA virtually this year thanks to the MCLA Lavender Fund. The Lavender Fund was started in 2019 and that was an alumni driven effort and so the hope was to raise money that we could provide to students on campus to really like increase and then also protect a lot of the LGBTQIA programming um, and life on campus and so with the first year we raised over six thousand dollars and that is part of the money that we're putting towards bringing Darnell um, to campus virtually this fall. The book that he wrote, the fact that it was a New York notable book, uh, the fact that we thought that faculty would be really interested in incorporating that in their classes, um, and that also I think that his story would really resonate with lots of our students. Um, so for me, I was it was kind of an easy decision. Well, I think this first um, effort to bring Darnell was very purposeful. Um, we felt that he was a really good first speaker to bring as part of the series because um, he is in intersectional and so you know he can speak to the black experience and also to the queer experience and we felt like that was really important um, to bring to our campus especially given the the folks that are here and mm -hmm. you know what Darnell is talking about and writing about I think is so um, important and timely um, and so we really felt like Darnell would be a, a perfect person um, to introduce to students um, and and kind of let him tell a little bit more about his story. Uh Darnell Moore's memoir, it covers so much, you know, I mean, I think it's been talked about as a coming of age story, but I think, you know, there are so many different um, layers to it. I definitely want to talk about it in the context of MCLA and some of the more relevant topics. Um, really like to look at intersectionality and understanding um, what what we're dealing with on campus and how people are navigating um, who they are. So we had a short list of a couple of different speakers that we felt kind of like fit into that intersectional, could speak to an intersectional experience. Um, but Darnell was someone that kind of came to the top pretty quickly. Um, he was also available and excited to do it, which really made a big difference, I think, to me. I thought that was really cool that he wanted to do this mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to come and speak to students. So. This event will be on Wednesday, September 23rd at 6 p.m. The event is free and you can register to attend at alumni.mcla.edu. For Beacon Web News, I'm Sim Kerr. Are you applying for jobs we need help writing your resume or cover letter? SESI, the Center for Student Success and Engagement, will be hosting a resume and cover letter writing workshop on September 24th at 2 p.m. in the Bowman Lowell Level CAF. 
If you are looking for some mindfulness or just to participate in some yoga, check out Mindful Mashup with MCA alumni Monique Sims. These virtual sessions take place on Sundays and are hands-on, so a mat is recommended. This link can be accessed through the MCLA Events app. MCLA is celebrating its 125th anniversary virtually. This event is to honor the history of the college. The event is free and open to the public and will be taking place on September 29th at 4 p.m. More information on the event and how to register is available on the alumni website at alumni.mcla.edu. The new MCLA website is officially up for everyone to use. May Craig spoke with Steve Pasola about what went into changing the layout of the school's website. This week on Beacon Web News, I interviewed Steve Pasola and what the process has been like in creating the new website for MCLA. Long process, you know, from strategy to building wireframes to um, doing site maps, design elements, uh, testing them out, making sure that the school the community is in line with it. So there's a lot of surveys in the strategic part, some interviews, they came onto campus and interviewed the students and faculty and staff, um, just so that they get the vibe right, you know, not to design something that's out of step with who we are. Um, so then the design elements came through and uh, that was kind of based on the Simpson Scarborough branding redesign that came the year before. So they're integrating that design with uh, interactivity and the strategy that they want to uh, put into the site. It was, it was old, it was 2012, which in web years is ancient. Uh, 2015 was when it came together, the last website. Things like um, Google tags, so it was, n uh, not, it was impossible to try to find where people were going, um, where they came in, where they dropped off. So adding Google tags on it, you can find the behavior of people that come to visit us and make decisions based on objective data. We're colorful, like it's way more attractive to the eye. Um, I mean, it has basically the same mechanics though. I mean, just, it looks different. Get a hang of it. It's pretty easy to navigate in my opinion. I like the new colors. It has this very coloristic view of MCLA. How will you go to the site as well? The sidebars, you, you click all these different options like student life or academics. It brings us to these different subtopics that is very easy to access. Two different websites. One was for the desktop version and one was for mobile. So mobile was a subset of the larger desktop version. Now we just have one version that works for desktop, for tablet, and for mobile. Um, so it's all the same content, where before we just had to keep on updating two different places. It's more um, user focused uh, for when visitors come, much more engaging and interactive uh, so that they can kind of design their own program, engage them, bring them into it, take a really good look at us, you know, to, to keep people on a website as long as possible so they see all the possibilities that we have to offer. Could you enjoy it? You know, give me feedback. Uh, it's an ongoing thing. So uh, the way that I was taught with website is that it's an iterative process. So it's constantly being built on top of itself and getting uh, improvements on improvements. For Beacon Web News, I'm May Craig. MCLA's Gallery 51 will be virtually hosting a discussion between Mass Mocha curator Denise Markintosh and artist Adriana Corral and Vincent Valdez on September 24th from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Join the MCLA Alumni Association for an online discussion on October 8th from 6 to 7 p.m. to hear from a panel of alumni to talk about how they built their careers in art education. The McDonald's in North Adams on Union Street is under construction as it receives some renovations. The building will be receiving a more modern look. The dining area and drive through will switch being open based on the construction. Currently, the drive through is open. And now from the Beacon. The deadline to sign up to run for a position in Student Government Association is September 27th. MCLA and Hudson Valley Community College signed an articulation agreement for students involved in environmental studies. Students from HVCC who receive an associate's degree in environmental science can transfer to MCLA as a junior to pursue a bachelor's degree in environmental studies. MCLA is starting its first composting pilot program in the townhouses this month after plans were disrupted by the pandemic last spring. 
the creators of the program hope that it can lead to a wider composting practices on campus. Kathy Holbrook will be retiring at the end of the academic school year. Kathy has been working at MCLA since July of 2015. The Beacon's editor-in-chief, Brian Rhodes, and BWN's executive producer, Sim Kerr, interviewed Kathy Holbrook on Microsoft Teams about her decision to retire. You know, I, I mean, I am certainly near retirement age. You know, if you do the math, I've worked for 40 years and I spent two years in grad school. Um, and I have loved what I do. Um, and I still love what I do. Um, but there comes a point when you look at it and you say, you know, I've worked for a long time. I've done the kinds of things that I think that I can do. And it's time for me to do my next phase of my life. You can check out these and other stories from The Beacon at theonlinebeacon.com or pick up a copy all over campus. That's it for this week. To stay up to date with BWN, you can follow us at facebook.com slash MCLABWN. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.